So if we're thinking about the loads that are placed on the musculoskeletal system, we can think about these loads in terms of the magnitude or the size of the load, and then we can also think about this as the frequency or the number of times that the tissue experiences the load. Now, Scott Dye, who's an orthopedic surgeon at UCSF, came up with this um, pretty neat diagram, and this diagram, which I'll draw for you, has on this axis here the load magnitude, so that's the size of the load, so we'll call that magnitude. And on the axis across here, we have the frequency or the number of cycles of load. And he was looking at this in the context of a joint and saying joint health is related to the type of loads that the joint experiences. We're going to kind of extend this idea and talk about tissue health. And so the idea here is that you might perform some sort of activity. For example, you might do a drop jump off, say, a 50 centimetre box. Now, that drop jump um, has quite a large load, if I draw these axes. So that drop jump has quite a large load, but maybe it's a very low frequency. You know, you only do this one or two times. And so this is where it might sit on, the, on this diagram. Uh, you might go and play basketball for two hours, and then obviously the, along the frequency axis, you're going to be experiencing many more cycles of load, uh, and the magnitude of that load might be a little bit less. So you might sit somewhere here on this diagram. And you can imagine populating this diagram with lots of different activities. So for example, sitting here right now listening to me, you're probably somewhere down here where you're not experiencing much load at all, and the frequency is very low. Uh, if you go swimming, for example, you might experience some load that's quite low as well. If you go for a long walk, you might be somewhere over here. So as you can imagine then, you can populate this diagram with lots of different activities. Now this is one challenge because uh, everybody's different. Everyone is, uh, is unique and everyone responds to these different loads in a different manner. So ideally what we'd like to do is give people the tools to enable uh, them to quantify where they are on this diagram. Now why is that important? Well it's important because musculoskeletal tissue, that's the muscles, tendons, ligaments, bone, they all respond to mechanical loads. And they typically respond in a positive manner. And that is if you exceed some sort of limit of the tissue, uh, the tissue will respond by usually getting stronger or bigger uh, and try and, and uh, improve its mechanical strength. Now, tissues, then kind of, if, we, if we're thinking about this diagram here, we can draw some zones. Now, these zones um, show areas in which you have, if you get above a certain limit, you would have what's called supraphysiological load. This is the loads that exceed the strength of the tissue. So suddenly now, you know, you're doing drop jumps and you do uh, many more drop jumps than just one or two and suddenly you know you're over here and you're suddenly then beyond the threshold of that tissue and so this is where you could get damage to the tissue now likewise if you have loads that are less than the tissue is normally experiencing you have uh, subphysiological loads now the tissue will adapt as well but typically it will adapt uh, in a negative manner. Now notice I've got that swimming example down here. If you're swimming and you're in a, uh, an environment that has less impact loads, you actually are at risk of having poor bone mineral density if you spend your entire life in the pool. Now the extreme example of this is of course if you experience zero gravity, we know that your bone mineral density is reduced at a very rapid rate. So reduced load is, is not so good, too much load is not so good, so we have this zone, and this is called the zone uh, of homeostasis. This is where if your tissues experience the right amount of load in terms of magnitude and frequency, the tissues are happy, and they're usually pretty, um, pretty good. Now what can happen in an injured state, let's say we take the tissue above this threshold, what can happen is this zone can change. Now that zone might actually reduce. Now, in our example before, where we played basketball for a couple of hours, in the non-injured state, we were okay, we were fine, our tissues were happy, but now in the injured state, suddenly the same load and frequency is placing more damage on the tissue. 
And this is really where it becomes important to monitor the workload, and here we're thinking internal workload of the tissues. What are the loads, what are the frequencies experienced by that tissue, so we can really make sure that our athletes have enough recovery, so that we don't get into this scenario uh, where now we're damaging the tissue instead of having a positive response in the tissue.